you know how a lot of professional fields require for you to stay in good standing that you get continuing education credits. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you go back and look at this paper that I've just been reading from in the American Medical Association Journal of Ethics, uh, right below the abstract, it says the American Medical Association de designates this journal-based CME activity for a maximum of one AMA PRA category one credit available through AMA ed hub. Physicians should claim only the credit commensurate with the extent of their participation in the activity. I looked at that and went, that's a lot of acronyms I don't recognize, um, but I suspect, and it turns out I was right, <clears throat> that what that's referring to is the American Medical Association's PRA credit system, which demonstrates a physician has participated in continuing medical education activities that meet the requirements of state medical boards, medical specialty societies, specialty boards, hospital, medical staffs, the Joint Commission, insurance groups, and others. And there is a quiz that you can take based on this article that I've just been reading to you, and if you pass, you get some continuing medical credits from the AMA. Now, I took this quiz and I passed it, but I'm going to show you the first of five. And you only have to get four of these questions right. Um, the first of five questions in this quiz, uh, just to demonstrate what it is that you need to stay in good standing with, for instance, your state medical board, your medical specialty society, your specialty boards, your hospital medical staffs, your insurance companies, et cetera. Okay? Uh -huh. Hand me my screen for a second so I can find it here, Zach. This is the continuing medical... Uh, education version of this article they have in case the article was just too complex for you they've supplied a an outline and then you can actually take the quiz and uh, you know they have author uh, author affiliations over here and again the the title of the article that you can demonstrate your complete knowledge of in order to get uh, continuing medical medical education credits through the ama is should uterus transplantation for trans women and trans men be subsidized the first question of five on the quiz is, which of the following is true about uterus transplantation in trans women? Anatomy serves as a barrier to doing so. A. B. Hormones make uterus transplantation in trans women impossible. C. Obstetric considerations have produced poor results. D. No uterus transplant has been performed in a trans woman. Obviously, at least one correct answer to this question is A. Anatomy serves as a barrier to doing so. I, however, long skilled in taking tests and gaming such systems, knew exactly what they were looking for, because it is also true that D, no uterus transplant has been performed in a trans woman. And that is, of course, the only correct answer that they will accept for this quiz, which you would be very well aware of if you would read the outline um, considerately provided by the AMA in order for you to gain as a physician your continuing medical education credits. And uh, one more time, my screen, uh, if I might, I just want to just show off um, that I did indeed pass. Here we go. Um, this, you can show this, this certifies uh, that I successfully comp completed this journal-based continuing medical education activity should uterus transplantation for trans women and trans men be subsidized. If I had a state medical board or an insurance company or anything that I needed to report my continuing medical education credits to, I could use this to demonstrate that I am in full current standing uh, and I have been keeping up on my medical education and I really know what's going on now. So you can trust me, patients, uh, with everything you need because i have passed this quiz well you weren't kidding about it's worse than that that is unbelievable yep. that i mean it is obviously a medical version of the social credit score mm -hmm. method for controlling behavior i can't even figure out how you phrase the obvious indoctrination of doctors so that they are on board with things that are clearly a violation of um the hippocratic oath and almost certainly in practice nuremberg now to to be fair why should we but to be fair i see i i don't know how many ways that you can earn your continuing medical medical education credits right sure so like there's there's, I do not suspect that most doctors are are being funneled through this particular it do, it doesn't, thing. It doesn't but make it any doesn't difference. Matter. It doesn't yeah. make any difference. Yeah. What they are doing is they are causing a 
belief system that is radical and highly suspect to become commonplace by teaching it as if it were factual and then testing you on it for a credit that you need. In which you have to answer the wrong way in order to pass. You have to deny, what was the question again? You have to deny that, that there's uh, anatomy serves as a barrier to uterus transplantation for men who happen to think they're women. Right, you have to not notice that that is an obviously correct answer. And how question. many times do you say lies before you start to believe them? Well, that's just the thing. And so here is at least one of the punchlines of it's worse than that in this case. Yeah. How did we get to a place where virtually the entirety of modern medicine, the medical schools, the hospitals, the doctors, the nurses were all saying false things about the safety and effectiveness of treatments. Well, this is the system they live in. Right. And that system, in that system, this is not gonna strike people as wildly beyond the pale. Right. This is somehow normal yep. and it creates- Why are we so obsessed with this? Why do we care? So I care so much. This is also of a piece with when we covered um, uh, McNeil and Fenton's uh, collection of the juking papers, of the stats. Yeah, the cheap yeah. trick yeah. in which um, efficacy was simulated through a mathematical, a statistical artifact. COVID vaccine efficacy was simulated through a, a, a experimental design artifact. Right. Or, in paper after paper that had been peer reviewed and nobody caught it. And our point was actually peer reviewed clearly doesn't exist because if it didn't catch this, then it couldn't have caught anything. What's it catching? Right. So the, the point is, okay, that's the academic side. This is the medical side. You have pure medical nonsense being taught and then tested as if it were factually insightful and a required bit of knowledge in order to practice. This is madness. Yes, it you is. You absolutely do not want a doctor. The only doctor who passed that test that you want is one who knew they were lying in order to pass it, who knew they were gaming the system. Any doctor who thought that they were actually participating in continuing education and responded correctly is not a doctor that you want dealing with your medical issues. That's right. So that's the world we're living in. And what it means is you want, the only things that make any sense are gonna be off label. You want the things yeah. that were reviewed by peers in a bar, <laughs> gave you a hard time about stuff in your study and got you to fix it in yeah. a bar. You don't want it peer reviewed at some journal that believes nonsense. That's not going to work. It's going to be counterproductive. You don't want doctors who went through continuing education in uh, silliness like this. You want doctors who, who care enough about it to, I mean, I think I think the bar thing is actually important here. You know, it doesn't need to be a bar, but you want people who care deeply enough about the scientific process and about medicine and about what it is that they've chosen to dedicate their lives to, that they continue to talk about it when they're not literally being paid to do so, right? That this is this is in their minds. This is like, you know, you are you a scientist after 5 p.m.? Well, yes, yep. right? So, you know, those of us who think this way, it is it is a way of being. It is not something that stops at the office door and the paycheck. And, uh, you know, I think peer review has become, just like these continuing medical uh, education credits, just like, well, I just got to tick the box, tick the box. Okay, what do I have to do today? I'm going to pick up milk at the grocery store. I got to get my CMEs. I got, like, it, it, it's meaningless. And it's just one more thing in a list of meaningless events that everyone is doing. And like to the degree that some number of doctors had real passion and and compassion when they began their work, this will kill it. This this will this will destroy it. It will destroy it. Yeah. I, I'm reminded, I can't remember the name of the guy, but there was a registered nurse during early in COVID who was reporting that patients that he was in charge of he knew very well that the treatment they were being being given required that they be gotten up and out of bed and walked around mm -hmm. um, because they were going to drown in their own fluids yeah. if they were left sitting and they were forbidden to do it and i remember him saying i cannot participate in this anymore i cannot be in mm. charge of these patients where i know the right thing to do for them and i'm not allowed to do it and I have to watch them die. 
and he quit. And I think the point is, okay, what world does that leave us where the people who didn't quit are the last people you would want in charge of your care, but it's all you're going to have available to you. Yeah. And there, there has to be some sort of, you, you know, you now have, I guess we're the off-label scientists. Oh yeah. You know, we'll review papers right here on Dark Horse, right? Is that peer review? Well, I don't know if you're up to it, I guess it is, but you know, you don't want something that's been reviewed by people who didn't spot the cheap trick, right? Right. Those people are not qualified, whatever their, their degree says. Yep. And doctors who pass a test like this and didn't know that they were lying in order to pass it. Yeah. Aren't doctors that you want in charge of your, your health. It's yep. just insane. Nope. That's, that's, that's all true. That's all true. So, um, sorry to have blown your mind like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, it did, it did actually throw me because yeah. you think, you know, how ridiculous things get. And the fact is, okay, uterine transplants, if you think about it, of course, should such a thing be medically possible, then of course it will be dragged into this, this trans madness. Um, but the idea of the AMA, this isn't some fringe practice. This is the AMA signing onto it wholesale. And then creating quizzes and continuing medical education as a way to what fund themselves as a way to justify their continued existence. Yeah. Uh, so it you uh, you did succeed in uh, putting me back on my heels where I I thought I was pretty verse pretty well versed in this space. I did not see the the AMA leading the charge here. 